What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video and this is going to be a discussion video based off of a comment that I got and even um, a message that I got on Twitter. It was kind of funny, within a few hours I got asked the same question and it's the basically the question that is the title of the video right now. Should the Toronto Maple Leafs even make a trade, you know, before the upcoming trade deadline? Because there is different reasons and I'd like to extend this beyond just one video because there's a couple players that I'd like to talk about, but it's almost the own rental situation. And I know a lot of people don't like that, but there's other ways of the Leafs being able to add at the deadline rather than, you know, go out there and make a trade. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to happen. We're still a little bit out. Obviously, the season technically just started, guys. I know it's a shortened season, but the Leafs have a lot of time until the trade deadline, which is like in a month. Like literally, there's still over a month until that time. Um, if I've got the date correct, I believe it's like april 11th or something i could be i could be wrong maybe i'm way off but all i know is, is that the deadline's not really that close and the fact of the matter is is the toronto maple leafs are leading currently at the time of recording this video the scotia north division like the north division let's not let's not give more promo to scotia bank um and they're leading the league and even by points percentage so just quickly, um, let's just pull this up right now, okay? So as you can see right now, the North Division, 38 points, Winnipeg has 29, Edmonton at 28, Montreal at 25, Calgary at 22, Vancouver at 20, and the Senators at 17. Now, the, the Leafs obviously are um, playing really well right now. Their last 10, 7, 2, and 1. Um, their away record, 9, 1, and 1. They, they just are playing really well. And then, like, when you compare it to the league by points percentage, they're still in first. Obviously, by points, they're still in first. Like, they're, the last 10, like, we're right there. We're tied for first with the Islanders. Um, but definitely just, you know, obviously, we've also played 24 games. or one of the, the highest teams in the league when it comes to that. But just look at this. When's the last time you've looked at 24 games in or 20 whatever games? Like, let, let's be honest, Tampa Bay could could easily get there with, you know, an extra four games played. Um, but again, they'd have to win all those games. That's the other thing. People are like, well, you know, Toronto's played 24 games. Well, we've won a lot of those games. So, you know, teams that have played less games, they're going to have to catch up. But it just because you're winning a ton and I'm one of these people that loves to see trades don't don't get me wrong I make videos about trade rumors I, I love that type of stuff but like I'm one of these people that understands that when a team is playing well sometimes the chemistry within the team you know is too good to remove um, a player from the roster and when you're going towards winning a Stanley Cup it's not like oh well let's trade Kerfoot and Nylander to open up this cap space to then acquire this guy and get this guy on the blue line like you're gonna throw things all over the place I mean look at Nylander's got goals in what four games straight four or five games straight Kerfoot looks much better in the top six now there could be room again you could if Kerfoot's permanent spot is in the top six and you can find a way to upgrade that top six and trade Kerfoot um, to get a better winger if the Leafs have to add in, you know, a second round pick, a good prospect, or maybe even it's Kerfoot in a first for, you know, retaining 50% of a really good, you know, second line scoring winger, that type of thing. They could do that. But I I'm not a big fan of like, oh, well, let's just like rebuild the top six real quick or the, the bottom six. You know, we could get this guy, he, this guy hits. Um, we'll remove this guy. Like, the Leafs' third line looks really good right now. You know, you've got a mix of Mikheyev in there, Engvall and Hyman. Like, they just look good. That looks like a very good checking, you know, pain-in-the-ass type third line. Boyd on the fourth line looks really good. Jason Spezza looks amazing this year. He's turning back the clock. And, you know... We've, you know, VC hasn't been the greatest, but two goals in his last game. Maybe he's going to turn the corner a little bit, get that monkey off his back, you know, start playing a little bit better. He's got a little more confidence. I mean, we heard the F bomb that was dropped. You know, everybody's getting real pumped for, for him to start scoring some goals. I'm not saying he could stay in the lineup, but the Leafs have their own rentals that will be either coming back from injury or coming up from the minors. You know, you've got a guy like Nick Robertson, if you want to give him a shot to play in that top six or, you know, to play on the fourth line for a bit of a boost, like kind of like what Kapanen did when he came up, uh, you know, he got a few really important goals against the Capitals. Like, 
you got to remember, like th that is a, a way of upgrading this team as well. If you're not liking the way Jimmy VC is playing, give Nick Robertson that shot. He's got a much better shot than than Jimmy VC. He's much faster, and you know maybe with some limited minutes against some guys that aren't as skilled, he'll get a chance to score a few goals, or maybe he plays so good that he gets to play alongside Tavares and Nylander. Then, you guys, we're forgetting about Wayne Simmons. When Simmons comes back, he had five goals before getting injured. He's going to be back on that power play. He's going to be back fighting people. He's going to be hitting people. He's going to be doing his thing. That is the definition of, like, an own rental. I know Rasmus Sandin is injured right now, but you still have Timothy Liljegren if you wanted to give him a look. But I do like the way Bogosian's playing. You know, uh, Leitonen is still there as depth as well. The Leafs have guys that can fill roles instead of going out there and making a trade. Now, like I said, there's a lot of there's still a lot of games in between now and the trade deadline. Now, the exact number, I'm not sure, but because I told you guys I want to make more of an in-depth video on this, um, this is just more of a discussion that I was asked about. And, you know, there's people going crazy with trade rumors, and I love that stuff, But and I will talk about most of them, trust me. But the, the reason why I like making videos like this is because I truly want to hear what you guys think. But the own rental route could be an option. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys was some stats because the Leafs have always had problems with their depth. Looking at these point totals right now, 34 for Marner, of course. Matthews, 31. The guy was injured a little bit there, but he still got those 18 goals. Tavares has 21. Um, we got Nylander with 20. He's starting to get hot. And I said, once Tavares and Nylander get hot, man, like that's adding on to these two being hot the four of these guys at once if they're going at the same time that's when the Leafs become even scarier you know you got Morgan Riley with 19 points Hyman and Spezza 15 points apiece that's depth Jake Muzzin 13 from the from the blue line you got you know Kerfoot starting to put up some numbers Joe Thornton has 11 points um, in 12 games guys like the, the guy's literally like almost a point per game player that's literally ridiculous I didn't even really take a look at that to be honest with you obviously playing with Matthews and Marner helps but I mean I'm definitely taking Joe Thornton at that league min contract for 11 points in 12 games Travis Boyd eight points in 16 games played he's been really good Justin Hall having a great year eight points and it's not just about points Hall's been great defensively Boyd has been quick he's been good in both ends you know, Mikheyev as well, not scoring a ton, but that third line looks really good. TJ Brody, I do not care if he had zero points. The way that he plays defensively right now is phenomenal. Jimmy VC, he's got to step it up and he's going to. He's scored a couple times, but he could be replaced. It's not a big deal. You know, Patan is going to get some some chances. Engvall looks a lot better now. Um, like I said, Wayne Simmons, when he comes back, he's there for the fighting. He's there for the physicality, but he's also there for that net front presence on the power play. And he had five goals before getting injured. But Gojin has actually been really good. Dermot, I don't need points from this guy. He's been playing very sound defensively, so I'm okay with that. Sandine, one point in one game, but he got injured with the Marlies. Barabanov, when he's entered into the top six, he actually looks pretty good. This is depth, finally. The Maple Leafs have a bunch of guys that can just, you know, next man up type of mentality. So if you do feel like a minor upgrade or a major upgrade could be made to this team without, you know, damaging the chemistry or damaging this team, phenomenal. But there's no point of going out there and making a move unnecessarily. Um, it has to make sense. It really does have to make sense for this team. And I and I truly believe that making a deal just for the sake of making a deal is not going to benefit this team whatsoever. Let's wait and see. Because if they keep rolling like this, there's no point of making a trade just to make a trade. But again, we're still a little while out. I just wanted to answer this question and give my thoughts on it. So please respond to me. Put comments down below. My camera's about to die. Glad I'm finished now. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe. Leave me some video suggestions. And check out my community tab because I said leave your trade suggestions there. Because if I do talk about more trades, uh, I'd like to hear from you guys first. So thank you guys so much. And uh, I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.